Hi bookish besties, my name is Brittany. This is Weskies and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today it is time to do my book of the month, September pick or pass. <music> are new to this video series here on my channel, this is where I review all of the selections that Book of the Month has made for their monthly curated selections as well as their add-on selections. Kind of review how I did in terms of my predictions and let you know if I actually selected any books or whether I decided to pass for the month. So as always we are going to go ahead and start with the main monthly curated selections and this time they had six. And honestly y'all this time Book of the Month kind of threw me for a loop. I was very much off on my predictions. Out of all of the six I think I only got one correct. There were some early releases in there from October and then there were some that were coming out in September that I had no idea about. They were not on my radar at all. I didn't see them around so they really really came out of left field. I did much better with the add-on selections though but the very first monthly curated selection I have is actually a historical fantasy. It is called A Song to Drown Rivers by Anne Liang. This says her beauty hides a deadly purpose. Zixi's beauty is seen as a blessing to the villages of Yu. Convinced that the best fate for a girl is to marry well and support her family. When Zixi draws the attention of the famous young military advisor advisor Fanli, he presents her with a rare opportunity to use her beauty as a weapon, one that could topple the rival neighboring kingdom of Wu, improve the lives of her people, and avenge her sister's murder. All she has to do is infiltrate the enemy palace as a spy, seduce their immoral king, and weaken them from within. Trained by Fanli in everything from classical instruments to concealing emotion, Zixi hones her beauty into the perfect blade, but she knows Fanli can see through every deception she masters, the attraction between them burning away any falsehoods. Once inside the enemy palace, Zixi finds herself under the hungry gaze of the king's advisors, while the king himself shows her great affection. Despite his gentleness, a brutality lurks and Zixi knows she can never let her guard down. But the higher Zixi climbs in the Wu court, the farther she and Fan Li have to fall. And if she is unmasked as a traitor, she will bring both kingdoms down. All right, so that actually sounds really interesting. You have our main character who is tasked with infiltrating and spying on an enemy court. This was definitely an early release. It's scheduled to come out according to Amazon on October 1st. So we got it a whole month in advance. So this definitely would not have been on my radar for September, but it is certainly an interesting fantasy to keep your eye out for and I'm looking forward to hearing reviews about this one. Then we have a historical fiction called The Love Elixir of Augusta Stern by Linda Cohen Leugman. This again was another early release, only this one was coming out on October 8th. So we got this even more than a month out. Again, this one would definitely not have been my prediction video for the month of September. And it's not one that I had ever heard of prior to seeing it featured on Book of the Month. This says, on the cusp of turning 80, newly retired pharmacist Augusta Stern is adrift. When she relocates to Rolantondo Springs, an active senior community in Southern Florida, she unexpectedly crosses paths with Irving Rivkin, the delivery boy from her father's old pharmacy and the man who broke her heart 60 years earlier. As a teenager growing up in 1920s Brooklyn, Augusta's role model was her father, Solomon Stern, the trusted owner of the local pharmacy and the neighborhood expert on every ailment. But when Augusta's mother dies and great aunt Esther moves in, Augusta can't help but be drawn to Esther's curious methods. As a healer herself, Esther offers Solomon's customers her own advice, unconventional remedies ranging from homemade chicken soup to a mysterious array of powders and potions. As Augusta prepares for pharmacy college, she is torn between loyalty to her father and fascination with her great aunt, all while navigating a budding but complicated relationship with Irving. Desperate for clarity, she impulsively uses Esther's most potent elixir with disastrous consequences. Disillusioned and alone, Augusta vows to reject Esther's enchantments forever. Sixty years later, confronted with Irving, Augusta is still haunted by the mistakes of her past. What happened all those years ago, and how did her plan go so spectacularly wrong? Did Irving ever truly love her, or was he simply playing a part? And can Augusta reclaim the magic of her youth before it's too late? I don't know, that sounds like really cute, very cozy, kind of heartwarming at the same time. The synopsis is truthfully not doing anything for me. It is definitely not one that I added to my box, but I did hear some people pretty excited to see it featured on Book of the Month. Now this next one was a September release, but it's one that I had never heard of before. It is a book called Sleep Tight by J.H. Markert. It was classified as a thriller by Book of the Month, and it says, Beware the one who got away. Father Silence once terrorized the rural town of Twisted Tree, disguising himself as a priest to prey on the most vulnerable members of society. When the police finally found his house of horrors, they uncovered 19 bodies and one survivor, a boy now locked away in a hospital for the criminally insane. Nearly two decades later, Father Silence is finally put to death, but by the next morning, the detective who made the original arrest is found dead. A new serial killer is taking credit for the murder and calling himself the outcast. The detective's daughter, Tess Claiborne, is a detective herself, haunted by childhood trauma and horrified by the death of her father and the resurgence of Father Silence's legacy. When Tess's daughter is kidnapped by the outcast, Tess is forced to face her worst fears and long-buried memories. With no leads to follow, she travels back to Twisted Tree to visit the 
the boy who survived and see what secrets might be buried in the tangle web of his broken mind. So this is absolutely one that I decided to add to my box. First of all, the synopsis is definitely right up my alley. We have a serial killer. He was caught, he was put to death, but it seems like there's somebody out there who's copycatting. We have the daughter of the detective who originally put Father Silence away. Her daughter has now been kidnapped by the outcast and it sounds like it's going to be a very crazy time and I am absolutely here for it. It is also going to satisfy a project that I'm working on all year long. So I definitely would have needed to add it to my box regardless of whether or not I actually cared about the synopsis of it. But thankfully, this one really, really caught my eye. So I did add it to my box for September. This next one is the only prediction that I got right. It is the new release from Coco Mellers called The Blue Sisters. I'm not going to read the synopsis of it because I did go in depth into the story when I was doing the predictions. But the quick take just says, three sisters reunite to grieve their lost sibling in this gripping family saga that will have you in your feelings. I remember after reading the synopsis that it definitely sounded like it was going to be very character driven. There was going to be a lot of family drama. There was going to be a lot of complex sibling dynamics. You have three sisters coming together to mourn their fourth sister who has passed away. And at the time, they're all kind of living all over the globe doing their own thing. And then, you know, they're coming together to deal with those complex feelings. This is one that I could not convince myself to pull the plug on. I am not really a literary fiction girly, even though I have enjoyed some literary fiction in the past. It's not something I gravitate to. And it's not really something I'm ever truly in the mood for. So I was worried that if I did put this in my box, that it would just kind of sit there and languish. But it could be one that I convinced myself to read at some point in the future. Like maybe I'll listen to it and then decide to go ahead and get it. But there was just something preventing me from doing it. I think I'm going to wait to hear some reviews about the story and see if it's something that I might be interested in adding in the future. Book number five was yet another September release that I had never heard of. It is a paranormal romance called Phantasma by Kylie Smith. It says, welcome to Phantasma. There are only two rules to the game. Stay alive and don't fall in love. When Ophelia's sister disappears, there is only one way to save her. Ophelia must enter Phantasma, a deadly contest inside a haunted mansion and claim its prize, a single wish. Phantasma is a maze of twisting corridors and lavish ballrooms of demons and temptations. Ophelia will face nine challenges, each more dangerous than the last. There can only be one winner and the other contestants will stop at nothing to eliminate their rivals. Every day the house creates new monsters, but just as Ophelia's fears threatens to overwhelm her, a mysterious stranger offers her a bargain. Charming, arrogant, and infuriatingly attractive, Blackwell claims he can guide her through the lethal trials ahead. All he asks in return is 10 years of her life. Ophelia knows she shouldn't trust him. Blackwell doesn't seem dangerous, but appearances can be deceptive. Worse still, she feels a dark and irresistible attraction drawing them closer and closer. Her life is on the line, but in Phantasma, the only thing deadlier than losing the game is losing your heart. So I'm actually really intrigued by the premise of this. This is kind of giving me like Serpent and the Wings of Night vibes by Carissa Broadbent. So I'm absolutely loving the vibes of this story. It's not one that I added to my box, first of all, because I don't like my fantasies to be in the book of the month editions. I like them to be in the standard editions. But here's something that I'm having to come to terms with about myself. As much as I love fantasy, as much as I love fantasy romance, I am not able to read as many of them as I want to because those are books that I really do feel the need to read physically with my eyes. So typically what I do is I immersively read them. I read them with my eyes and I listen to them at the same time. And unfortunately, I don't have the bandwidth to do that as often as I want. This is one reason that I don't read physically hardly at all anymore. Like 98% of what I read during a year is listened to via audio because I don't have the concentration. I don't have the ability to just sit down and physically read a book. Reading immersively helps me with that. And that's why I choose to read my fantasies that way. But even then I can only read a handful of fantasies a year, unless they're pretty simple, not very complicated fantasies that I can easily listen to. And I'm saying all this just because I have to be really selective about the fantasies that I choose. Now I will say that this is marketed as a paranormal romance. So this does seem like something that could easily be listened to. And I might go ahead and add it to my TBR. This is another one that I might want to wait on like early reviews about because I really want to know what people are thinking. Overall, the synopsis sounds absolutely phenomenal. It definitely contains a lot of really popular tropes that you're seeing out there these days. So I would be willing to give this a shot, but it's just not an immediate priority and it's not one that I added to my box. And the final selection was yet another September release that I had no idea about. It was not on my radar at all. I had never heard of it. It's a book called Mad Woman by Chelsea Beaker. And I wasn't originally going to add this to my box, but I had a lot of friends that were also really interested in it and reading the synopsis of it, it did definitely sound like something that could be up my alley. It is classified as contemporary fiction, but I definitely think that there's going to be like a psychological thriller aspect to this. And here's why. It says, Clove has gone to extremes to keep her past a secret. Thanks to her lies, she's landed the life of her dreams, complete with a safe husband and two adoring children who will never know the terror that was routine in her own childhood. But when she receives a letter from a women's prison in California, her past comes screeching into the present, entangling her in a dangerous game with memory and the people she thought she had outrun. As we race between her precarious present day life in Portland, Oregon and her childhood in Waikiki high rise with her mother and father, Clove is forced to finally
finally unraveled the defining day of her life. How did she survive that day and what will it take to end the cycle of violence? Will the truth undo her or could it ultimately save her? Now one of the reasons why I was hesitant to pick this up is because it clearly states here from Book of the Month that it is an unreliable narrator and it says that this is about a prison letter that sets in motion the slow unraveling of a woman haunted by her past in this twist-filled domestic drama. So I'm definitely worried about how unhinged our main character is going to become. I don't typically love books that have unhinged main characters. So I'm a little bit nervous but I mean come on this sounds perfect. I don't know there was just something really really intriguing about that and so I did go ahead and add it to my box. And then moving on into the add-on selections like I said I did a little bit better here with regard to my predictions. So the first one was the newest release from Leanne Moriarty called Here One Moment that was a book that I featured in my prediction video. The quick take just says and her latest Leanne Moriarty poses the question what would you do if you knew how and when you die? I remember when I talked about this I compared it a little bit to The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich because if I remember correctly this follows people who are on like a plane and there's somebody on the plane who can predict how and when people die and then when people actually start dying in those manners they kind of like start freaking out and it's really about that existential crisis of what happens when you know how and when you're going to die and how do you choose to live after that. I really loved Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty and I know that I enjoyed what Alice forgot but for the most part any of the other books that I've read by her have not really been hits and I don't know there's just something about the synopsis of this that I'm really not interested in exploring any further so I did not add this one to my box. Another one I got correct was The Night We Lost Him by Laura Dave. This was another one that I was hesitant to add to my box just because I didn't love the last thing he told me. I didn't hate it either. It wasn't terrible by any stretch of the imagination but it just I don't feel like deserved the hype that it got. It was just an okay three 3.5 stars for me and so when I saw her newest release on here I was like do I really need to add this to my box because I don't know if I'm gonna love it. Maybe I should listen to it first but again I did add it to my box and it is on its way to me so I will be getting it. I do want to give Laura Dave another shot because I really like the synopsis of this one. I'm just kind of worried about her ability to execute it well based on my experience with the last thing he told me. The quick take on this just says combining rich family drama with mystery elements this novel movingly exposes the dangerous effects of family secrets. So we're gonna see what it's all about once I get it but yet I definitely added this to my box and it was the fourth and final book that I added. Another one I guessed correctly was the newest release from Matt Haig called The Life Impossible. This just says after being gifted a house on a charming island a retired teacher books a one-way trip and begins a magical adventure. This says it's a fast read, quirky, inspirational and there's an island setting so I know a lot of people are really looking forward to this one because they are fans of Matt Haig's previous releases so I know that they were really happy to see it here. It's not one that I added to my box. Next we have a fantasy that released in late August that I had never heard of before called The Crimson Crown by Heather Walter. This says legend tells of a witch who became a queen, the heartless villain in the story of Snow White. But now the wicked queen is stepping out of Snow White's shadow to become the heroine of her own legend. Her real once upon a time begins when she is just I left, a young witch who lives in the forest with her coven. The witches practice their magic in secret, hiding from the White King and his brutal war against witchcraft. Ilith, however, faces a war of her own. Her magical gifts have yet to reveal themselves, and as the threat of the royal huntsman intensifies, Ilith fears she will never become the witch her coven needs. To prove herself, Ilith sets out on a perilous quest that sends her to the White Palace, a decadent world of drama and deceit. There, Ilith encounters an unlikely figure from her past, Jaquetta, a witch who once held Ilith's heart and betrayed her. Okay, so it sounds like this is also going to be queer, kind of like an origin story for the Wicked Witch from Snow White. As events at the palace escalate, Ilith finds herself caught in the web of the White King, whose dark charisma is as dangerous as the sinister force that seems to be haunting the palace, and perhaps even Ilith herself. With the threat of discovery looming, Ilith and Jaquetta must set aside the wounds of their past and work together to survive. As she uncovers the secrets of the White Court and those of her own heart, Ilith must find the strength to transform into someone she never imagined she could be, a powerful witch with the very wickedest of them all. So y'all know I'm not a fairy tale person and I'm definitely not a retelling person, so this is certainly not one that is piquing my interest, but it actually sounds like a really intriguing origin story for the Snow White Evil Queen. So for those who are fans of fairy tales, of fairy tale retellings, and villain origin stories, this one is certainly one that's going to be right up your alley. This next one is actually one that I already talked about briefly in my TBR video just because this was an add-on release that Book of the Month announced prior to September 1st. So it wasn't part of my prediction video or anything like that, but I was aware that it was going to be featured on Book of the Month prior to September 1st. This is the Someone in the Attic by Andrea Mara. I won't go ahead and read the synopsis here just because I did talk about it in my TBR video, but it just says, turn those nightlights on. This hair-raising read will awaken your greatest fears and have you checking all of your locks. This is one that I would have needed to select regardless because again of that project that I'm doing and I lied earlier. This was the final book that I added to my box. And then another one that I got correct was Vilest Things by Chloe Gong. This 
this was the second book in her Immortal Longings. I believe it's just a duology so this is going to be the final book in that series. I wasn't surprised when Book of the Month featured this because they do like to complete the series if they can. So if you did enjoy Immortal Longings, if you got the Immortal Longings Book of the Month edition, this one is there and waiting for you to be able to select on Book of the Month. And then the last one of course was the release from Lori Colwyn. Like we've discussed in the past, Lori Colwyn is an author that actually passed away many years ago. She passed away in the early 90s and Book of the Month has kind of rediscovered her work so they've been releasing some of her stories. Now the past couple of releases have been stories that were contemporaries when she wrote them. This one is called Home Cooking and it's actually part memoir and part cookbook. It says weaving together memories, recipes, and wild tales of years spent in the kitchen, Lori Colwyn delivers a beloved cookbook manifesto on the joys of sharing food and entertaining. So this is definitely a little bit different than any of the other releases that they have selected from her but I do believe that this is the last one that they are going to be featuring by her. I haven't really talked about her in any of like my prediction videos just because like I already knew that they were going to be coming so I didn't really feel like it was appropriate. This is a very unique thing that Book of the Month is doing with this author so I just kind of wanted it to stand on its own. So if you have gotten any of the releases that Book of the Month has featured from Lori Colwyn, if this sounds interesting to you, this might be one that you want to look into as well. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are all the books that Book of the Month featured as their monthly curated selections as well as their add-on selections. As always, if you are a Book of the Month subscriber, please comment down below and let me know if you picked or passed and if you did pick, what did you actually pick? If you are not a Book of the Month subscriber but any of these catch your eye, please let me know any of them that you have now added to your TBR to read in the future. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some type of food emoji in honor of Home Cooking by Lori Colwyn. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.